I went into this expecting nothing. I think that's how you have to go into movies like this I kind of thought now. it was going to be bad, though. Because, mm-hmm. like, they just wanted to make a movie. Because, like, mm-hmm. they've made two already. And yeah. I guess they both did well enough. So, like, it kind of felt cash grabby. But the second one, like, is iconic. The second one? Yeah, especially now that, bad, like... bad, though. It wasn't bad. I, I don't remember anybody liking the Johnny Depp version. Mrs. Buckets would <laughs> spit on her cabbage-filled <laughs> grave if she heard that. I, I don't like it. I never liked it. What? You I, like the original better? Yes. It's actually a good movie. Maybe we're products of different generations. Johnny Depp's just creepy as it. Why would you want that? Hello, children. And like the random flashbacks that were completely unnecessary. Were, he, Count Dooku is his dad <laughs> who lives on Antarctica, maybe, or the North Pole. But the, again, completely it's unnecessary. Chocolate. And the songs were apparently just like rock vote. Like they were the same lyrics as the book. Mm. But like weird rock versions. It was great. The music, the songs were great. Really insane. Look, to look, me. look. We're getting off topic. Insane. Here. We're talking about into the, the new one. into the Wonkaverse. We're talking about into the Wonkaverse. And this is my favorite Wonkaverse film. I'm just gonna put it out there. I like it better than the other two. Well, I, the only thing that got me keen was when I when I saw the like from the director of Paddington Two, mm-hmm. Paul King. I'm like, ooh, Paddington, Paddington Two, mm. fucking slaps. Look, I'm not. A, as big a Paddington fan as you, I know it's a lot of people's favorite movie. It's very good. Paddington fucking two. Paddington two is incredible. I fucking told you. So I came out of it and I said, "This kind of gives me Paddington vibes," and you're like, "There's a reason for that." <laughs> yeah, good, did it, good news. Did it give you a Paddington fan Paddington vibe? Yes, but mainly because like the movie hinges on your suspension of disbelief. Mm-hmm. Like with Paddington, it's the fact that no one seems to mind. There's a marmalade sandwich eating bear. Yes, and everyone's yeah. kind of just like completely normal. Except yeah. Peter Capaldi, the next door neighbor, is like, he's a bit of a rapscallion. I don't, I'm not, I don't care that he's a bear. That that doesn't factor into it. Mm-hmm. But what does? But matter, he's up to something. <laughs> yeah, he's a shifty bear. Don't try to rationalize this movie. Exactly. That's, yeah. that's the thing, and it's like I think that was the point with the last movies too. But the last movies don't hinge on it. No, yeah, this one 100. Yeah, and I think it does flap both ways. Hinge reference. I don't know, but it's because <laughs> <laughs> the oh, sometimes it works sometimes. and sometimes it doesn't. This movie feels magical, like hella magical a lot of the time. And then there's sometimes that my suspension of disbelief was not strong enough mm-hmm. for the weird shit they were trying to pull. Yeah. Like I think some of the the magical fantastical stuff was easier to believe than some of the stuff that could maybe be recreated in real life. Like yep. them like flying with the balloons onto the roof and stuff. You could go, oh, in their imagination maybe. Like, and yeah, or like the the flying chocolates and stuff. I'm like, yeah, but then it's like when Timothy makes the um, the dog automated washing machine in in ten seconds. I was like, this is number one bullshit. <laughs> they 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 also couldn't decide what Wonka was. They were like, yeah. he's an inventor. That they, they took he's a magician. They took the weirdest parts of yeah. his character from the Gene Wilder version. Mm. This is definitely pre Gene Wilder version. Yeah. Like, they kind of pretend Johnny Depp doesn't exist. But they still reference it a few times. Yes. So it's kind of like, it's kind of its own thing as well, which I liked the way they, they didn't throw it in our face. It wasn't constantly like, remember the, remember Charlie and the Chocolate Factory? It did feel more subtle than that. Mm-hmm. In the Gene Wilder version, there's a lot of inventions and stuff, and mm-hmm. he's kind of become a recluse, so he's done a lot of wacky things. Yeah. And he's made, like, the soda pop that makes you fly. But his core business was just normal candy. Like, good candy and very good chocolate and stuff. Mm-hmm. But in this one, it's like, every candy has a gimmick. starting off with crazy. Yeah. And like, I like how he, he seemed to take a lot of care in it and he loves his chocolate. But then it got super weird. They were like, oh, this one makes you fly. Mm-hmm. This one makes you grow hair a lot. Yeah. This, this one makes you sing in a Broadway musical. This one makes you confident. It's like, it got away from the fact of just chocolate really quick. And mm-hmm. I guess it, they wanted to make it more magical. But... That mixed with like some really bad CGI occasionally, mm. like Whoa. just it pulled me out every now and then. What the but hell happened? Overall, really fun. I loved it. I didn't know it was a musical either. Did you know it was a that's, musical? That's that's the thing. <laughs> I don't think anyone knew that this was a musical. <laughs> they didn't advertise Which it at all. We should have thought of that because of the like the last one is like. Oh, you're gonna you're gonna expect that there's, there's a musical music, number. There's music in them. I did not expect. But this is this like to be a, a musical. Every scene. Get ready for a yes. music number. It's it's from any musical. character really. It's like it's a song. Mm-hmm. We do a little bit of talking to get us to the next song. Yeah. It's a musical musical. Yeah. Whereas in the other one, it was like, oh, kid died. These guys are gonna yeah. sing. This is for more a while. of a musical than The Greatest Showman. <laughs> um, yes. Yes. <laughs> Weirdly. <laughs> Weirdly, this chocolate movie. Does how do you feel about the songs overall? What did they? Did they all? Did they hit? I walked out being like, every single song was a bop. 
But if you ask me to sing any of them, but like there's chocolate and chocolate and um, scrub and scrub and scrub. Yeah. Scrub and scrub and scrub. Uh, I think just scrub, 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 scrub. Either those are the only two I remember, and obviously like the the newer versions of like the older songs. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't remember anything else. But I remember liking them all. I remember I, liking like the villain song when they're like underground. I didn't like the sad ones because okay. I think again that comes from the magical realism. They were like, look at all these magical whimsical things. Nothing goes wrong. There's people being held captive in a basement, but nothing really matters. And then this little girl's like, oh, I'm so sad about my missing family. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you'll, you'll find her. It's fine. Like yeah. you got a family really. So like I didn't care about anyone's struggles mm -hmm. in song form and just because they're not as quick they're a lot slower but the the boppy songs definitely hit but mm -hmm. i'm the exact same i can't remember like anything except those two yeah but i'll like listen to the soundtrack maybe if i'm yeah. like bored on it. uh timote did very Timothee. fucking well he, he looked like he had a blast like, i think yeah he had fun and it's so crazy being like this is that kid from dune this is that kid that's Sleeping with Kendall Jenner? Kylie Jenner? Props to you, Timothy. <laughs> props to you. When you watch this, have a Pepsi. We made a joke in the movie about like Olivia Coleman plays like the most despicable human being mm -hmm. ever. And it's just like she's dirty, she's gross, and yeah. she's making weird, dumb sex jokes. And we're just like, this woman is a BAFTA award winning <laughs> actress. This is one of England's finest actresses. This is almost Doctor Who one time. Like, beautiful performances is capable. Her range <laughs> amazing. We're gonna make her a cockney, like, dirty business woman. Like, oh. she's gonna, you know, she's gonna mess you over. Anyone that says this isn't Wonka is mm -hmm. wrong because he immediately endangers children's lives. Yeah. Like, he meets a little girl in this movie, immediately taking her on rooftops, taking her into, like, Breaking tiger into caves. Zoos. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Putting her in the most harm possible, leading mm -hmm. her through the sewers, caught making her commit crimes. This man is Wonka. And the best part is, is he's so, like, optimistically He's like, very happy. naive, yeah. Yeah, like, naively happy and just, like, kind of, like, oblivious to, like, anything around him to a degree well he, he's illiterate that's what i that's what i like about his character is like and that's what i like about like the uh johnny depp kind of character as well is like he no. always see everything with like a glass half full but he's so creepy whereas this is like um, get oh, a wow. glass half full cabri <laughs> um, there's a glass and a half in everyone but th like that's where the that guy was creepy as fuck to me yeah whereas like this one is naive and fun mm -hmm. and again that's why the movie never felt like die or anything yeah i i, I liked timothy's timothy Chalamet. everyone was liked, pretty good I, yeah i i liked the cast like the ragtag group what did, um, what did you think of the villain <laughs> um, very i liked uh key the of, villain the villains are three chocolatiers played by three british actors yes. including matt lucas and the guy from ghosts and the guy from a series of unfortunate events i think i like the but, i like that main villain he's fun slugworth Yes, he's fun and evil and his singing like bits are like fun and like how he kind of like wrangles the two um, But they're all like kind of their own character But their thing is um, like they rule the chocolate town They have a monopoly on chocolate And they keep a reserve of chocolate they use for bribery Which is all very strange But again, they get away with it Like it's mm -hmm. just it's just played so whimsically He who runs the chocolate runs the world Exactly and why Willy Wonka wants to do his chocolate in this town that hates him? Because it's the number one town, and his mum said maybe. But they they shop even there. say in the movie that it's they only believe chocolate should be bland. Mm -hmm. They're like this town is run by chocolate, but all the chocolate is held in reserves, not given to poor mm -hmm. people. So I was like, how is this the town? But it doesn't matter. You can't poke holes in this silly movie. It's fine. Yeah, honestly, it's it's great. It's simple enough that like Willy Wonka goes to. The town renowned for chocolate. This French English, <laughs> yeah, -ish. probably English, I guess. Except the bad guys are French coded. Is that a thing? Can you be French coded? Yeah, it's like interesting. And, then, uh, and he wants to become the world's best chocolatier, and he wants to start his first store and become famous. And that that's pretty much it. And yeah. then the three, the chocolate mafia stands in the way. I think they even call them the chocolate mafia. They call them the chocolate mafia. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, he, he comes to town with the dreams of opening up a shop, but all he has is is like twelve buckaroos. Um, oh, the, silver florins. The opening song did get me. It's about like how he's, he's losing. He's like slowly like losing money. Yeah, he's losing a top but then, like, he a also, like has like a heart, you know. Yeah, it's a good save the cat moment that you're like, okay, mm. good guy, very stupid, 
but I like him. Yeah. But that's when he starts busting out magic, like pulling things out of his hat. And he has like an like, infinite hat. And then they try to get away with solving that as far as plot goes, because in a flashback, he's like, and then I tried to make my mum happy by learning magic. Yes. And it's like, magic doesn't let you defy the laws of physics, You didn't become buddy. a sorcerer. <laughs> <I mean. laughs> yeah, he became the literal wizard to yeah. impress his mum. It's like, well, this is convenient. It's a great, like, convenience kind of thing, because they don't have to be like, oh, uh, uh, yeah. You know, but you it's just funny like, that, like, yeah, if you, try to, if you try to poke a hole in it, they're like, no, no, no. In that flashback, yeah, he said he was mum. It's like, damn, you got me, boys. You got me. So he gets um somehow trapped or, like... He doesn't, he doesn't oh, read the fine he print. He doesn't read the fine print because he reference, can't read. Which is a reference to Gene Wilder's version mm-hmm. where they go through you the giant contract. didn't read the fine yeah. print. So like that, it's, it's subtle enough. It works in the story. It's not like they pull out this thing and they're like, remember this? Mm-hmm. It's not full member berries. So I liked it. They were done well. He gets kind of trapped into indentured servitude. <laughs> um, he's going to have to work for like at least 30 years or whatever to work off one night's stay. Yeah. And slavery um, is completely legal in this town. Which, which is fine. Which, which again... <laughs> Whatever. It's and fine. And like some great bits. I wish I knew who the, the male actor was because he was fun. Um, what didn't you like about it? So we, uh, we've oh, gushed oh. about this a fair bit. Like, obviously, it's not a perfect movie, but it is very fun. It's not good enough to keep kids entertained. Mm-hmm. It's, they seem to have aimed it at kids, but it's two hours long. Yeah. And honestly, there's a lot of downtime. Mm-hmm. And like, there's a lot of big pops of color where he's, when he's doing his Willy wonka stuff. But then the rest of it's like a really beige town, which it's so that there's binary opposition. So it's like, oh, here's colorful Willy Wonka bringing his colorful colors to this boring town Mm -hmm. that somehow the chocolate mecca, but whatever. Um, So like, there's a lot of brown in this movie for a kid's movie. Yeah. So I think, yeah, I think kids are going to probably struggle. The kids in our cinema goddamn did. Oh my God, I almost almost knocked a kid out. It's a testament to the fact that we still like this movie Mm -hmm. after... Possibly one of the world's worst mothers that Definitely. still has access to their kids. Definitely. <laughs> where, where are you, bitch? They were climbing and running everywhere, screaming, climbing on top of things, throwing things. Zoom. And then there's just, ah! And it's like, I don't Jesus. want to go home! Anyway. But we still like the movie, so like, it must be a good movie what if we I can get What I didn't like, though, um, yes. I, sometimes like some of the special effects... And I'm like, what? The, I'm like, what the fuck is what? What in the Flash is this? No one's allowed to do stunts anymore. Like yeah. Timothy Timote spins around a pole at one point, and he's CGI for the whole thing except you're the just end like, of it. I'm like, I'm like, bro. I'm like, he's not even climbing that in a magical way. He's climbing that like freaking poochie. He's he's like, it's like the like, fucking sliding <laughs> like poochie off thing. <laughs> I'm like, that's just what they do with him. And like when he's like has the balloons and he's like jumping up. Like the little like dome in yep. like, the chocolate thing. It's literally like someone just like clicked and dragged Timothy PNG and was just like, "Yep," and then we'll just play here. You know, I'm just like, "What the fuck is this, it guys?" Rough, yeah. Like, surely this movie had a budget behind it. Can we put the budget up here? It's like, come on. And like, I know they probably had to, they had to do a lot of stuff. Probably like maybe like a lot of wire work with like people flying and it a didn't bit more pull real. me out of it. But yeah. it was it was very much like oh <laughs> like there's like uh, some animals in the movie which I was like although the draft looked better than some of the some of the Timothy I think it's because G- they PNG. when you first see the draft it's very dark and it, he looks very like they go for a cartoony draft it's yeah a bit of a stupid draft don't, don't milk giraffes kids the movie <laughs> lied to it you was a strange thing. he's just like. Well, I used to... The one thing I really liked before we <laughs> got into the more dislike... Knocking. No, is I like every time he, like, brought up some ex- exotic ingredient, he mentioned where it was from, and it was, like, a bit of alliteration. The vanilla from the markets of Manila or something? Yeah, the but, vanilla yeah. from Manila. You know, it had a bit of rhyming. But it was somehow always, like, that makes fun. you grow hair. Or and, like, like made-up words are fun. There's a lot of made-up words in this, but I think it goes well rhyme. because he's also... Um, and it's a book. Like, and he's also illiterate. Yes. So it's like, it kind of makes sense yes. that he just like would throw a word in there. Yeah, I mean, if Shakespeare can do it, why can't he? If the dictionary can do it. Yeah, because it, it's like, yeah, chocolate, pocket. But it works. It, they, yeah, they nail it for a lot of the mm. for the, a lot of the dialogue. But enough about what we like. What, also, what also real like? quick, random key being like a Brooklyn cop. <laughs> but, this is a good bit. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yes, what didn't you like? Um, do you think the end wrapped up really quickly? The, the whole third act was very strange. Yeah. It turns into like a heist movie. Yeah. It feels like they didn't know how to wrap up the script. So yeah. they were like, okay, we need to do we need to do this more so than like carry the whimsy. Mm-hmm. I think the Paddington movie, Paddington 1 definitely kind of has that problem as well. Nicole Kid- Kidman like kidnaps Paddington mm-hmm. and then the whole family has to band together. It's it's the same which thing. One, which one's the one that ends with like the train to the ladder? I like that. I yeah. Like that one. Which one? Is that the jail one as well? Yes. I like that yeah. movie. 
with Nardo Moody. Yeah, I like yeah. that. Yeah, Pain Center is fucking rules. Anyway. But it, again, it, I guess he kind of did write the same script then. If yeah, everyone has to band together to like mm. rescue someone at the end. But the yeah, the, the third act. It's you know yeah, it was just a bit strange. Everything again, from didn't kill it. But. Everything from the chocolate shop failing to the end. Yeah. Um. I don't know if it's just like the last half hour, like it's already been an hour and a half. Maybe my attention was kind of waning. Or maybe it's the movie, movie was just like, hey, we need to wrap up these beats real quick. Yeah. Um, you know, we need Noodle to find her family. We need Wonka to get, you know, free and find his dream. I didn't, we need everyone to get free. I didn't like that Noodle got a happy ending in the way that good on her, but she ran, like her mom's just in town. Yeah. And like, she just like, She's around a, town. They, she goes around. And mm. I know it's like they kind of had like a fi- found family mm. thing going, and then at the last minute they're like, "By the way, Noodle, your mum's over there," and she's like, "Mum." Like like Noodle, the the bookworm wouldn't in her free time when she because she's allowed to go around town to do errands. She yep. wouldn't go to Never the library. To no, but she looks at her and she's like, "You you can tell they know. They you know. Can tell. There's no sh- little people in this movie. Did the little people, little people get angry, or was it regular people getting angry for little people?" I think it's I the think same it thing they did with the Seven Dwarves and like um, Tyrion Lannister. What's it? Peter Dinklage has had some yeah. comments about like, oh, little people shouldn't always have to play dwarves and stuff like that, or like a short person doesn't always have to play a short person, which is funny. Like going off the back of Russell T Davies being like, only gays should play gays. Only he's very much like play who you are. Whereas mm-hmm. Peter Dinklage was like, we shouldn't always play dwarves. Isn't which the is purpose why. of being an actor? That you can play anything. It would be nice, but I mean, <laughs> that, nice. that's the thing. Like a lot he of played people... a giant in Thor. <laughs> he played or, a giant in, dwarf in, in, in um in Infinity War. <laughs> but yeah, he played a giant. Dwarf. But like, I think it's the over thing, thinking thing, and also Paul King loves Hugh Grant, mm-hmm. so it's very much like get him, and he did great. He was in a lot less than I thought he would mm-hmm. be. He but, did just play Hugh Grant. Yeah, but being being Hugh Grant, I thought he was going to end up being in half the movie, and it was going to mm-hmm. be like it was going to be him noodle. And Wonka doing stuff, yeah. but he rocks up like three times, and he's like, "Ha ha!" and then leaves again. So I was, I was pretty happy with him. He's kind but of fun, though. It does feel weird that they like just didn't hire a. And he's also coloured like the whoa, um, and he he looks like the original, original Warpers from Warpers, Gene Wilder, yeah. not the same the green same Kelly guy. Hair. Yeah, not the same guy from the Johnny Depp one. A green man with orange hair. No, that would be ridiculous. <laughs> I think he says at one point. <laughs> the scrub scrub team, the mm-hmm. inmates, they were a little bit too forgettable. Yeah. Like most of them did blend into one another. The, they the were telephone supposed, lady? They were supposed to all have an ability mm-hmm. or like a be useful helpful. thing. But it was there was the accountant and then there was the plumber that plumbed once. I thought she was a lumberjack. I thought she was something about being a lumberjack. <laughs> I'm pretty sure she was a plumber. Does she mean like chopping wood as in like poop? What? I don't know. I <laughs> hope alone. not. I thought she said, I thought she said lumberjack. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, telephonist. The mm-hmm. telephonist one time, but for the rest of it was Oh my god, the quiet. comedian. Her his was job in the fucking heist was to do a funny voice on the thing. To pretend he was call? underwater for a second. Which, again, you can't... Can you poke holes in it? Because they referenced earlier, they're like wow, you're really good at talking like you're underwater. And it's like, I don't know. That's it. You can poke holes in this stupid movie all day, but it's pretty fun. The one part that's funny with that comedian is where the guy who had his, who's had him in prison for like 15 years is like, keep on trying. You've got something. You know? <laughs> that's, that's just you liking the the. That's just me wishing guy. that my dad told me <laughs> that I should keep going with my that's dream. That's just me projecting. Are you happy, dad? You can poke movies in the holes all day. Yeah. Wait, but scratch that. Reverse it. But it was fun. I had fun. I didn't know it was going to be a musical. Yeah. Very forgettable as a musical. I don't know if I'll watch it again. I, I would reckon... I if- think I'll watch it, but the next time I watch it will be in five years when I watch all of the w- movies back to back. When you Wonkaverse? This is definitely the second best Wonka movie. It's the first best movie. Really? But I'm a very big musical fan and, and I like Timothy Chalamet's acting Timothée. in this. Timothy Chalamet. I think... I don't think anyone's going to leave this movie and be like, Ugh. Yeah. Now that was a stinker. No, I think you just you come out and you're at at minimum you're going to be like, yeah, that was yeah, a movie. That was pretty good. Yeah, that's a Willy Wonka movie. This is how Willy became Wonka. This is how the Wonk got his will. <laughs> Where there's a will, there's a Wonk. Where there's a will, there's a Wonk. Um, Not enough child murder to be a Willy Wonka oh, movie. I think I need more children to be. In, only one child really gets some in, good like, solid child endangerment. Previous bodily harm. Not enough. Did they die? <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Now, make sure you, you, you click the gumdrop subscribe button <laughs> and you have a lick of the bell icon. And also, take a bite 
of the chocolate thumbs up and leave a candy comment.